So Malaysia is buddies with three countries, Indonesia, Brunei, and Thailand. But wait, there's one more, Singapore. Though technically Malaysia does not share a land border with Singapore, they're still connected by a causeway and a bridge. Today I'll be sort of backpacking um, the seventh most expensive city in terms of cost of living. Okay, let me take the wheel with the narration while you keep the vlog going. I hope you do. We're headed to Singapore today and an hour flight from Kuala Lumpur, we will arrive in the only island city state on the planet but it packs in over 50 parks, 4 nature reserves and tons of gorgeous gardens and green spaces in just the 728 square kilometers. And get this, according to some of the world's most famous economic reports, Singapore is the third most competitive economy in the world, right behind Switzerland and Sweden. Not too shabby, huh, for a small country. So welcome to the 12th time world's best airport, the Changi Airport. Now for Asia passengers, they arrive at Terminal 4 and you can catch a free shuttle to their next terminal or to the Jewel, which is one of the most popular attractions in Singapore. And this Jewel was designed by the very famous Israeli architect Moshe Safdi, who kind of looks like Einstein. So once you're here, you absolutely have to check out. They've got so many attractions, but the one that I wanted to go to was the 40 meter tall physics powered rain vortex. It will blow your mind because it is the world's largest indoor waterfall and yeah it really looks whoa and if that's not enough head over to the canopy park on level 5 where you'll find a discovery slide which is inspired by the chicago bee the suspended bouncing net that's like nothing else a futuristic mirror maze that will leave you feeling a zizi and finally the topiary walk with some super fun photo opportunities touristy stuff it's uh mm, gimmicky but it's nice because it's just the way to chill i mean sometimes you just get too bored at the airport and if you have such an attraction why not right and this one costs eight singapore dollars so okay good see if it makes you hungry oh man that's a marketing so you play and you get hungry and then you can buy more stuff It brings out the child in you, what can I say? So whether you're a tourist or a local, it's good to know that owning a car in Singapore can be crazy expensive due to all the taxes and the fees. But hey, these policies actually help keep traffic under control and encourage people to take public transportation which is pretty reliable, safe and very affordable. So why not, from Jewel, just stroll over, it's a few hundred meters or maybe I don't know if it's a kilometer, maybe, to Terminal 3 and hop on the MRT where you have access to over 200 stations. Pretty easy. So my next destination is downtown station D17. This is called Lao Pa Sat. It is basically an old market from the 19th century that got fixed up but still looks pretty traditional. The building is made up of Victorian cast iron and has a ton of fancy decorations and cool details. There are so many different food stalls and vendors selling all sorts of yummy local 
and international food like Chinese dim sum, Malay satay, Indian curry, Singaporean laksa, you name it, you have it. It's super big, airy, there's lots of seats. No harm checking out and it's absolute value for money. Now, accommodation in Singapore can be more costly than any of the neighboring countries in the Southeast Asian region. But there are many good options available to fit your need, right from Singaporean $20 right up to $500. And for me personally, for this trip, I chose to stay at The Cube. Now, The Cube is a boutique capsule hotel. And quite frankly, for me, if I'm traveling alone, I prefer to stay in a capsule hostel -y sort of place so that there are more social stuff going on than just being in a hotel, which I find is pretty boring. But then again, suit your own need. Now this place costed about 300 bucks a night. It's very stylishly designed. It's fairly well priced and they give you hotel amenities. Now what I particularly like about this place is that the convenience it's right in Chinatown and their bedding is wonderful. You won't find this in a lot of hostels, but it's Singapore. So the bedding was good, it was like a cloud. And this is something pretty rare from the little experience I have staying in hostels. They have individual bathrooms, which means the toilet and the shower place is one entire space for your own self. You don't have to take your stuff and move from different cubicles. So that was a big plus point. Besides the jewel, which is already, I think, a billion dollar project, they have another billion dollar project, which is the gardens by the bay, you know? It is the world's largest greenhouse. Okay, and if you look at these super trees, they do not only have an aesthetic purpose, but they are actually functional. Now, what do they do? They harvest rainwater, they take part in air intake and exhaust, and solar energy generation how cool is that like and this entire setup is actually home to more than half a million plants of more than 2,000 variety of species which were imported from Ecuador Costa Rica like I'm just so mind blown man okay besides that I think this is the other interesting part as a Singaporean it's just at your backyard that you have a free light show every day and they change their themes like every two to three months it's so cool um but when i was there the last takeaway from this place i think it was really really beautiful when you, whether you're from afar or whether you're viewing it from the bottom it's really beautiful so should you pay for the observatory deck or the skyway i don't think so that's just my personal opinion because with this um, architecture, you know, I think it's a lot more beautiful from the bottom than it is from the top, like an aerial view. And plus, the walk is pretty short if I'm not mistaken, so do check it out and see if you want to go on it. Okay, so this was a very interesting stop that my friend introduced me to. So this is called the Golden Mile Tower. Inside this tower, there was a theatre called the Golden Theatre, which was actually the biggest cinema in Singapore and in Malaysia in 1973. Fast forward today, when the theatre was no more there, there were like three heroines who joined forces and they decided to restore this freshly vacated vintage theatre on the fifth floor to what's known today as the projector. I stole some script from their website, but hey. So I love this story. You know why? Because they actually delivered what they promised or what they um, visioned out. Because the, the retro vibes, the indie feel is like, it's so well preserved. You just step in there and you're like transported. So unfortunately, there were no tickets left to catch any show. So um, we just had a classic hot dog and then a night nice craft beer and just caught up on some way over to you I'm not a foodie but the beer is good yeah. I mean you can saw hot dogs
So the number six pit stop on the list is Kampung Glam. So what Kampung Glam is is basically a street that is filled with shops, restaurants, cafes that show off the Malay and a lot of the Middle Eastern culture. So one of the most important and iconic structures on this street is the Sultan Mosque and it looks really really pretty at night. And you can also shop for all the traditional textiles, perfumes and experience authentic Middle Eastern cuisine. We had a lot of Turkish uh, food, the kebabs, the shawamas, hummus, um, pide and then the lokum, the Turkish delights. So it is a very vibrant street uh, and just a few hundred meters away is also a street filled with bars. Yeah, it's super cool to check out like if you're there Friday night, Saturday night, very lively. So to wrap up day one, as much as I thought that I still had that backpacker side of me as soon as I reached the hostel I was like oh, why didn't I just get a hotel and have my own space and not have to take my stuff and go to the bathroom and shower and come back and unpack and and try to be as quiet as possible because as you know you're sharing the space however the exhaustion was real the body ached the mind was drained but the sense of accomplishment, the breathtaking views, and the memories created were all worth it. It's in these moments of tiredness that we realize what we are truly capable of. <laughs> I know, 23,000 steps, man, that's mad. But thank God for that cloud-like pillows and bed. The minute I touched the pillow, <laughs> la la land. So the two days I was there, it was rainy, rainy, rainy. But I'm not complaining because I have to walk a lot. And I'm not a big fan of the sun sometimes. So it was nice. It was like cloudy, rainy, and it was cold. I forgot to mention the most interesting thing. I think you saw it in the news, like Gunting, uh, Singapore fell a bit like Gunting. I kid you not, it was very chilly breeze. And the bed was so comfortable and I was so tired. Quite frankly, I just wanted to sleep in but I couldn't miss what I was going to check out today. So for starters, let me just say something about the hotel breakfast. It was the basic, like the most basic Asian, uh, sorry, Malaysian or Singaporean black breakfast. Like some mee goreng, some eggs, some fruits, bread, coffee, tea, juice. That's about it. You and I probably watched a lot of viral videos on this really cool art installation that had this like Chris Nolan sort of lights and you know like they're so interactive and stuff and I was super stoked to find out that this exhibition was in my neighbor country and how could I not check it out so pit stop number seven which is my most favorite part is the future world art exhibition at the arts and science museum so the team behind this incredible experience is called team lab who is a Japanese interdisciplinary art collective they collaborate to create an immersive and super interactive installation that combine tech art and nature and if you've read ikigai it's got a lot of this ikigai concepts going on i really love it like it was so zenful and i just created that it was yeah so they use this this um group they use like projections sensor, tech, and all these installations that respond to your movement, to your presence. I was just so mind blown, I tell you. I was like, yeah, I was so immersed in the whole experience that look at me, I even stole a spot of a child and I stole their crayons and I was doing my own thing. And uh, literally trying to project the fish that I drew. And look at how interactive it is. Yeah, that's me chasing the fish that I drew. But yeah, I loved it. I loved every bit of it.
food stuff. I know you're being like, hey, Singapore is food heaven. Did you not check out any food stuff? Not so much a foodie, but I still decided to put it on my list. However, as I was so engrossed in that previous attraction, I missed the chicken rice. So as I was walking pretty aimlessly and like looking at each of the hawker center signs and googling, I met this very nice Singaporean and he was sharing his experience about the economy, about the way of life and then he told me that he should check this out and that out and then we ended up in the same queue to try the famous Tanglin crispy curry puffs and um, <laughs> in everything that he shared, he told me one thing while we went the line, he's like, girl the curry puff here not the same like Malaysia later you check it out <laughs> okay uncle let's check it out and yes the curry puff was like pretty big it's like a meal they were filled with big chicken chunks a full hot full ball egg like sliced the potato it was really f- it felt like a meal and two dollar fifty cent for that one puff okay so that was my last pit stop for the Singapore travel journey my most favorite takeaway from this entire trip was that I didn't want to start off on a negative note but having been to Singapore a couple of times and uh, experiencing their way of life I didn't particularly feel like it's a place that was very friendly or I wanted to go back to however this time around it was like a 180 change like I had nothing but good experiences interacting with so many locals super friendly and I was even like pretty sesat on my way to the airport people went out of their way to help me everywhere we've seen a lot of change so that's a big good plus good thing and a lot of attractions in Singapore seriously I was unable to do some stuff because of the rain so I definitely would 100% go back to the city if you enjoyed this video do give me a thumbs up i also realized that a lot of people who view the videos are actually not subscribed to the channel i don't post as frequently but when i do travel i like to tell some tales so if you enjoyed it do hit the subscribe button too and until next time then this is way harder than i thought i thought it'd be quiet at night oh. okay let me take like, take 500 of something, okay. <laughs>